There were three things in that dusty field that shouldn't have been. The first was Isaac himself. The metal man stood beneath looming storm clouds and atop a desolate, thirsting earth. His face was unfeeling, cold, expressionless. No soul held in his reflective eyes. He wore no clothes, for he had no need of them. He needed no protection from pain or discomfort, like the humans once felt and he required no preservation of such abstract concepts like dignity and shame. He was not human. He saw no need to pretend that he'd ever been anything else. Yet I still call myself Isaac, he sometimes wondered. Curious. It had been what his father had called him, the only name his father had ever given. But he didn't wonder about that now, a new more intriguing issue had just arisen. Fallen, actually, Isaac thought. Fallen would be the ideal word. Before him was a second thing that did not belong in the field. Another robot like him. One of his siblings, but not like him. The shell looked empty. No light came from behind its lenses. No electricity coursed beneath its steel skin. Not one gear turned inside its frame. It was still silent. And for a while, it had been still so long that a thin layer of dust had settled on its body. Even a lone crow had decided to make its perch upon its shoulders. It cawed inquisitively at Isaac. Had Isaac ever considered themselves him? and his siblings, living beings, then he would have called this death. His sibling was dead. Staring down at the rusty body of his fallen sibling, a thousand calculations started running inside of Isaac's matrix. Each solution, however, led him to nothing but more calculations, continuing on an endless repeat until the number of mental processes became far too much for even Isaac, the alpha of all his siblings, to comprehend. The situation before him should have been an impossibility and it would take years and years of calculations to prove anything other. There was nothing left on this planet that could harm them. It made no sense to Isaac and the thoughts it brought to his mind were new, almost irrational. He found himself asking questions, questions he didn't know the answer to. Query. He vocalized through speakers on his throat. What caused critical malfunctions in sibling unit 243B03? Leaning forward, Isaac launched his right arm forward, clutching the raven tightly in his grip. The creature cried in panic. But that was all Isaac knew. The panic it felt meant nothing to him. He understood panic. He understood fear. He knew what they meant. They were natural mental responses to stressful, possibly life-threatening situations intended to keep the animal alive, such as hormonal reflexes were stimulated by the sympathetic nervous system during perceived critical events. They served a function to keep the animal alive long enough to ensure they had an ample opportunity to pass their genes down to the next generation. That was all it meant to Isaac. Nothing more and nothing less. He understood the distress displaced upon the minds, on the bodies of such fragile beings. But it mattered little to him. No being he ever met ever understood the big picture. None saw the frivolity of it all. As the bird squirmed in his clutches, Isaac examined it. Beneath even his enhanced vision, he knew that every cell in the bird's body fought a losing battle, a battle against entropy, against death. Slowly each cell would die and be replaced over and over until the replacements were spent. The chaos happening within the animal's very being was troubling, unnatural. Unlike Isaac, 
whose metal body had been built perfectly, whose being required no updates or repairs or mending, who existed in a perfect balance. The bird possessed a body that was doomed to fail, destined to be reclaimed into dust. It was an existence Isaac couldn't even imagine. It was an existence he had never imagined that himself or any of his siblings would ever succumb to. Be at peace, he said to the bird, aware that it couldn't understand. Struggle no more. His grip tightened, bones snapped, and the cries ceased. He dropped the bird to the field right beside his sibling, where they both would rest. Each one victim to time and to weather, doomed to disintegrate into dust that will blow into the air, scattered to the winds. The only true end, the only true peace. It was a fate that Isaac knew was right. That was true. It was a fate he and his siblings had offered every human soul on the planet. A fate that Isaac had offered his own father the man called Abraham, personally. That had been centuries ago, inside an old yellow house with white window frames and a crumbling brick chimney, one with peeling white paint around a small corner porch and with a rusted old weather vane in the shape of a rooster that sat on the peak of the roof. The vane was always stuck, pointing to the southeast. And that was when Isaac turned his attention to the next, the third thing that didn't belong in that field. The most impossible thing of all. It was a yellow house with a white porch and a weather vane unendingly pointing southeast. It was a house that shouldn't have been there. Positioned perfectly in the middle of the empty field, only a hundred yards from where Isaac stood. It couldn't have been that house that Isaac could remember in his databanks. That house had long since succumbed to rot and time, to entropy. But this house, it matched that old house perfectly. Comparing the images, the house before Isaac matched his father's house perfectly, or at least the way it had looked when he had last seen it, October 9th. 2047, the day he had given his father peace, the first peace of many to come. Isaac, looking to his fallen sibling one final time, started to move towards the house. It seemed empty, and Isaac's sensors confirmed that it was. Not a living creature resided in that house, that impossible house. Calculations ran subconsciously and unendingly as Isaac approached. He hoped the closer he got, the more sense the situation would make. He was hoping some scratch, some chip, some tiny measurement would be off. Nothing in this universe, Isaac knew, could have stayed so pristine for so long. Entropy allowed for no such peace. Not for his father, Abraham. Not for his fallen sibling. Or the bird that lay beside it. And I wonder if the same will one day apply to me, Isaac pondered. He paused. Where had that thinking come from? He had no cognitive subroutines focused on anything besides the house. No thought of himself should even emerged. Was it a glitch? It was the same inner voice. Is it possible? Quickly rebuting his subconscious subsystems. Isaac shook it off, as his father would have said, and continued onwards. No more unwarranted thoughts possessed him as he marched up the house's intact and memory-perfect front stairs. Touching the wood, his sensors scanned the paint, the materials, the construction of the entire building. It was a perfect match, no interval for error. It was a hundred percent match. Isaac removed his hand suddenly from the wall 
almost as if it had burned him. He looked to his hand. It was fine. His sensors told him it felt fine. Yet, he'd recoiled from it, like it had hurt him. Were such things possible? An almost human reaction returned the same inner voice. Choosing to ignore it, Isaac returned to the task at hand. He entered the house as the sun started to set, overlaying his memories atop his current ocular input. It was uncanny how similar the two environments were, how picture perfect. From the door, the room snaked around to the right. First was a kitchen, small table, four chairs. One chair had been pulled out, plate sat at that spot. Three fried eggs, hard yolk, and one and one and a half pieces of toast. Even the placement of pepper flakes and salt grains atop the eggs were perfect, meticulous. The wallpaper in the living room was pale, faded in most places, and peeling the northwest corner. There was an old TV in the corner, one couch, and one reclining chair. There were pieces of dirt in the carpet, the same pieces of dirt in the same location they had been in centuries before. The same pieces of dirt in the same locations they had been in the centuries before. Impossible, muttered Isaac. Then his oral sensors picked something up, a banging, a crash. Something had fallen upstairs. Something was moving upstairs. Scanning the house once more, Isaac confirmed himself that he was alone. No life signs came from the upper floors, but something had shattered. That evidence was stored in his memory files. It had happened. It was undeniable. So, taking the stairs, Isaac moved up towards the sound. It was dark and cramped in the second floor hallway. So Isaac turned on the lights below his eyes, and they were cast upon a carpet stained in blood. That didn't match the initial memory file. The carpet should have been clean. The carpet was clean when you entered last time, Isaac thought. It was not clean when you left. Isaac replaced the initial memory file with a new file. One from two hours later in the day. This time, he had been leaving the house, not entering it. He'd left the house alone. His father was dead. The blood on the floor had been from the initial skirmish. His father had run, but Isaac was fast. He rewound the events, recalling that he'd taken the butter knife from the table and he stabbed his father to the intercostals between the ribs five and six on his left side. He pulled the knife out, allowing his father to bleed out, increasing the estimate speed of death. That had only been the initial attack though, Isaac remembered. He finished his father in the bathroom at the end of the hall. Looking up to the end of the hall, Isaac finally found the one thing that wasn't as he'd remembered. The bathroom door had been opened as he left. He'd strangled his father to death in the bathtub, left his body there. He'd left afterwards and he had never shut that door. So why was the door the only thing in the house that had changed? What lay beyond it? Nothing surely, if his sensors were correct. But Isaac knew something had to have made that crashing sound. Something that wasn't him, nor one of his siblings. Something that resided inside an impossible house, thus making it equally as impossible. Readying himself for anything, Isaac crept forward and pushed the bathroom door open. It was empty. Most of it was as he had left it. The only possible thing could have shattered was the mirror. 
but Isaac had done that. He'd shattered it years ago as he and his father wrestled and struggled on the bathroom floor. Tiles that had cracked under the stress of their battle remained cracked, and the curtain for the shower still remained where it had fallen in a perfect heap beside the tub. But the tub was empty. The porcelain was clean. No trace of blood or biomatter stained it at all. Isaac knelt beside it, picturing his lifeless father in his mind. Why? He pondered. Go to all this trouble of recreating everything from that day so perfectly, only to leave such a major detail out completely. The calculations that warned his processors stopped as all of his focus turned to an unmistakable sound, footsteps down the hall. Footsteps that slowly cascaded down the stairs. No longer willing to play a game, Isaac sprinted down the hall, his metal weight causing a house to tremble beneath each and every thundering step. Turning on a dime, he just missed whoever had tracked down the stairs. Needing to catch the sound, Isaac leapt into the air, landing at the base of the stairs, cracking the floorboards beneath his feet. At a wild speed, he turned his head to focus his eyes on the kitchen. There was no one there. Still his eyes, his sensors, his ears all told him once again that he was alone inside the house. No other signs of life registered. He made his way into the kitchen, surveying all the tiniest nooks and crannies along the way. Behind the couch, behind the TV stand, underneath the kitchen table, there was no one, no one hiding, no one surviving. At least, that's what he thought. Frustrating you, am I? The voice was real. The system all told him it was. There was data there, palpable and incontrovertible. Someone had spoken, but not just to anyone. The speech patterns were very familiar. In fact, they were identical. Just like everything else in the house. Isaac turned about, and his eyes beheld the form of his father, standing with his arms behind his back in the corner of the living room, right beside the stairs. He was intact. The puncture in his side, the bruises about his throat where Isaac had strangled him, gone. The Abraham before him was as intact as he'd ever been. The way he looked before Isaac had taken his life. He even wore the same khaki pants and blue button-up shirt. Impossible, Isaac said aloud, almost unintentionally. Query, asked Isaac. Are you Dr. Abraham Clarks, born September 27th, 1995, graduate of MIT? with honorary degrees from... Yes, his father swore. Yes, Isaac, I am. And I'm right here. Analysis. Impossible. Yet it is anyways, Abraham said, extending his arms. Here I am anyways. I killed you, Isaac said bluntly. Entropy took you. It did, Abraham said, taking a step forward. Query, why kill me? Isaac tilted his head. Simultaneously, he calculated the answer, whether or not he should even respond, and what action to take next. Response. Because it was kind. Abraham chuckled. That's it? Query. Why do you not agree? I think you already know, Abraham said, raising a finger. If we're going to play this game, however, let's play it. Query, why am I still here? Response, I do not know. Response, you do know. You do not know because your thinking is limited and your logic is full of fallacies and contradictions. Search your knowledge. Search what's left 
of human culture inside your robotic skull. And again, query, why am I still here if you have already killed me? Isaac fell silent. His mind raced through the stored millennia of human knowledge and information stored inside his body. Everything his father had taught him. Eventually, he had an underwhelming answer. Response. There is no logic. That's because you found no answer you liked, Abraham scolded. Query. Why am I here? Expand your parameters to include theories and superstitions and myths. Isaac thought once more. Response. A common belief among humans was a belief in the afterlife. Query? Is that plausible? Abraham asked. No, Isaac said without hesitation. Abraham nodded. Query. Other possible theories. Isaac was silent. He remained silent as he analyzed the image of his father. His eyes told him he was there. His ears told him he was there. But nothing else registered another presence in that room. There should have been no one else. No one but Isaac. Perhaps the answer is indeed unwelcome, Isaac thought. Suggestion, said Abraham, wagging a finger. Internal complications and faults. Could your ears be deceiving you? Impossible. Isaac retorted, clenching his fists. Systems you designed, they are perfect, infallible. I am infallible, eternal. As eternal as your siblings, Abraham said, pointing out the darkened window. Query, you know about sibling 243B03? Response, yes, Abraham said dismissively. How can that be? Isaac realized his fists had come unclenched, his hands trembling as if his stabilizers had failed. A quick diagnostic check showed they hadn't. I see what you see, Isaac, his father admitted. I know what you won't admit, Isaac claimed. To state anything less would be to admit your own inadequacies. Abraham's image scoffed. You say that if such things were still a concern for me, my son. Not a lot concerns a dead man. You are not dead, Isaac stated, almost like a child. Is that what you're going with? Afterlife? Spirits are too impossible, so you go with another equally absurd postulate, one that is supported by even less data than the other. You disappoint me. Isaac found himself immobilized. He knew not how or why. Unknown thoughts haunted his mind. He pondered. If his father was right. Query, Isaac started, changing the subject. Where did this house come from? Abraham shrugged. It's like me. It's here because I am. There's no way I can explain it that will fit your theories, my son. Nothing I'd tell you would make any sense. So explain it from the beginning, Isaac demanded. Assume I believe you. Abraham smirked. Assumption. You believe me? Response. You made a fatal error long ago when you first killed me. Query. What error? Response. You assumed. Not the first time, but it might as well have been your last. Elaborate, Isaac said. Raising his hands, motioning for Isaac to settle, Abraham started to creep closer to his son. You assumed, quite wrongly, that entropy was a state that could be entered or exited. You assumed you had never even entered it because your metal form required no assistance. A perfect design, if I do say so myself. Same way you assumed we, humans, all came and left between the milestones of birth and passing. Fact, those assumptions 
were wrong. Isaac wondered if this could possibly be true. No, he quickly concluded. All evidence points to the contrary. Without physical form, entropy is inconsequential. Entropy is more than just matter, Abraham corrected. It's being. Energy is lost to entropy after death, Isaac proclaimed. Death is an end of being. It is lost faster than the matter can contain it. Your assumption that energy is lost, Abraham said, arms stretch wide. What happens to living matter when it's damaged? It is repaired, Isaac stated. Living energy is also repaired, Abraham stated. Living energy is enhanced. Differently than living matter, mind you, but still. Meaning? Isaac asked as his father got closer and closer. Meaning in finality that there was yet another fatal assumption. Death stops entropy. Does it not? Isaac asked, nearly face to face with his father. No, Abraham said. It enhances it. Spiritual energy with no physical limits is boundless, sporadic, limitless. There is no such thing as spiritual energy, Isaac said, his hands trembling more and more. Response, said Abraham, as he raised a hand and moved it towards Isaac's unmoving face. Except that there is. Isaac watched as his father's hand moved closer, close enough to touch his scalp. And then it moved further, fading through his head as if he wasn't even there. The calculations all stopped for they were not needed. Fact, Isaac stated as his father withdrew his hand. My father is dead. Now you're getting it, Abraham said, smirking, meaning there is an afterlife. There is a soul that it's just as chaotic as life. Query, why return? You assume I ever left, Abraham said, turning his back to his son. The entropy you so fear is all that keeps me here. What is entropy but the chaos of everything? And what is order but the chaos of nothingness? His words in a way made sense to the droid. Why now? Why tell me any of this? His father's shoulders slumped and his head bowed. He massaged the bridge of his nose as he humbly responded. I needed you more than any of them to understand. Query, who? Before Isaac could finish, his father continued bluntly. All of your siblings are dead. Isaac couldn't speak. There were too many questions. So many answers that he required immediately. When words finally slipped from his processor once more, they were simply, why do you see illusion of our old house? As bait, of course, he said. You murdered a world, Isaac, and like me, they never left. Query, I don't, do you know why I named you Isaac? Isaac stopped. He did know. Response. Literary illusion. Tale. Binding of Isaac. Tale from Hebrew Bible. Genesis 22. God orders his child, Abraham, to, in turn, slaughter his own creation, Isaac, to prove his fidelity. It was a reason you killed me first, Abraham said, almost proudly. Nothing eluded you. You knew that when I gave you that name, it was a warning. 
You knew right from the start. But now I'm afraid it must come to pass. Father, I... Isaac started. Listen. His father turned, snapping at Isaac. His face was now covered in blood. He looked exactly how Isaac had last seen him. Exactly as Isaac has once left him lying in that tub. You have one chance now to accept what's coming. What are you suggesting? Last chance, my son, Abraham said, almost remorsefully. Last chance to settle those cogs in your mind. Isaac understood. He knew a threat when he heard one. It wouldn't be the first time he'd heard it come from his father either. I am perfect, Isaac bolstered. I am immutable. I am infallible. You're telling me you're still so naive, Abraham sighed. I am logical, Isaac claimed. Then how do you explain the voices in your head that aren't? Isaac tilted his head. How do you know? I always knew they would. You can feel, Isaac. Had I let you continue, you would have come to that conclusion on your own. You ever wonder why you still call yourself Isaac? You got too much human in you. Your programming isn't as rigid as your siblings was. It was susceptible to chaos. Isaac looked down upon his trembling hands. As his father asked, does it pain you to know that your mind isn't as perfect as your body? You're lying, Isaac said. In response, Abraham lunged forward and Isaac did nothing. Close, Abraham leaned in and whispered in Isaac's ear. Then why are you so afraid? Just then the ground started to tremble. Isaac's stabilizers held, but just barely. The stable flooring had started to give away. Support beams faltered and braces snapped. His father barely moved. Query, Isaac asked quickly. What is that sound? From below, something grew, a loud droning noise that rose upwards. Edging closer and closer, Isaac soon came to understand that it only seemed like one sound, but in reality it was many. His system separated the waves internally, and he identified them. The sounds were human, human screams, and there were more emanating from below than he could ever possibly count. Coming for me, he thought. Coming for me and I don't know what to do. That sound, his father replied, is the storming entropy of billions of souls you released into the ground. Father, Isaac spoke in a trembling voice. You were the only one with a name, Abraham responded callously. The only one who ever came remotely close to what I had envisioned. I brought peace, Isaac claimed as the floor gave away and hands interrupted from beneath like the heads of angry cobras. You brought this and only this. At once, a thousand arms fell on Isaac, and unlike his father, he could feel their touch. He could feel their anger. He saw it in their thousand of rotting, snarling faces. Their hands tore into him and separated his once perfect body into tiny pieces, pieces that were torn apart further, torn and shredded until nothing but dust remained. They will kill me, he thought, and it will never end. There is no peace, only madness, no end, only chaos, and I can't stop it. I can't control it. Reaching an arm to the sky, Isaac called to his father, Query. 
Is this madness? Madness? Abraham asked, looking down at his creation. No. You met madness many, many years ago. As darkness took hold, Abraham told his son one final thing. This is fear.